The System 2000 blade consists of replaceable carbon-tipped steel teeth that are attached to the mounting plates on the greater mold board. The mounting plates are attached to the mold board using wedges or bolts. The clearance between the mold board and the ground is the same as in other blades. The mounting plates come in two lengths. The moldboard length determines which length is used. Before installing the teeth, the mounting plate is lubricated with fuel oil. The teeth are hammered into the mounting plates using a soft-headed hammer such as a nylon hammer. The best installation device planned until today to attach and detach the steel teeth is such a one where the teeth chamber of the installation device will not damage the hard metal of the steel teeth during installation. Either 96 or 104 teeth are needed depending on the blade length. The tooth shank has a retaining ring which enables the tooth to rotate during operation. In this way, the teeth wear out evenly and their service life is maximized. There are several types of teeth for different purposes. The most common types are narrow flanged and wide flanged teeth with pointed tips and wide flanged teeth with obtuse tips. To ensure good results and to minimize pavement damage, Special attention should be paid to the cutting and grating angle and to the pressure applied against the road. The cutting angle should be set at approximately 50 degrees. This angle ensures maximum contact between the hard metal tip and the road surface. The rear blade method must not be used. If the grater has no indicator for the cutting angle, the angle should be marked on the equipment frame using, for instance, tape or paint. The grating angle must be less than 80 degrees. This ensures tooth rotation during operation. The tooth blade is suitable for various applications, such as removal of packed ice and snow, planing of gravel roads in the summer, milling and working of oil gravel surfacing, breaking up and leveling layers of crushed stone at road construction sites, planing of rutted pavement, and leveling of pedestrian and bicycle paths. Experience shows that the tooth blade is an excellent tool for removing packed snow. However, compared to other blades, the tooth blade is more demanding to work with owing to its unique operating principle. Because the teeth penetrate the road surface relatively easily, they may damage a soft surfacing material. To avoid such damage on roads with this surface, the cutting angle should be set to less than 40 degrees. Blade combinations can be used in some work phases, for example, when removing a hard layer of packed snow from the edges of a road. A good blade combination for this would have one or two mounting plates for teeth installed to the edge that is used for grading, and plain edged blades or blades with holes elsewhere on the moldboard. When thick layers of packed snow are scraped, the blade does not always penetrate to the desired depth and starts to skid. Should this occur, the snow must be removed in more than one layer. Once the snow has been removed, the surface is good for driving and walking because it is not slippery and has no grooves that hamper driving. The tooth blade loosens material easily and is therefore an ideal tool for leveling the top layer of gravel roads. 
If the top layer of material is crushed rock, the material may be so hard and tightly packed that breaking it up with other blades is difficult. A wide flange tooth is used. The wide flange minimizes the risk of tooth breakage and prevents dirt from getting on the bearing surface. Gravel roads that have a thin top layer and more ground stones than normally must be graded with care. The cutting angle should be set lower than normally. The operator should make sure that the teeth actually rotate during the work. Jam teeth wear out quickly. A tooth blade is also excellent for milling oil gravel. For milling, the temperature of the road surface should be at least 15 degrees Celsius. Teeth with pointed tips are used for the purpose. The whole width of the moldboard can be used for milling if the temperature is high enough and the surface material is soft. At lower temperatures, only one mounting plate is used for the moldboard. The working width can be adjusted easily by adding or reducing the number of teeth. When the first new set of teeth has been installed into the grater, they are used for approximately half of their service life and then replaced with a new set of teeth. The half-used teeth can then serve as spare parts. The teeth are removed by using a spike and a hammer or by a device by which the steel teeth can be both detached and detached. A tooth that has broken or come off during operation should be replaced immediately with a tooth of the same type and condition. A set of teeth should always be as uniform as possible. To ensure even wear, the teeth should rotate during operation. A tooth that does not rotate will soon wear out. For this reason, tooth sockets should be lubricated at least once a day. The teeth are lubricated with fuel oil. Thicker oil should not be used because they collect dirt into the tooth sockets, thus preventing the teeth from rotating. Tooth rotation should be checked as often as possible. When planing gravel roads, more frequent lubrication is required. The teeth should be lubricated two or three times per shift. Dirt that has accumulated in the tooth socket should be removed from time to time using a pressure washer or a water hose. If the blade is not to be used for a long period of time, it should be cleaned and oiled carefully and stored indoors. An oil bath is recommended for storing the blade. Provided the System 2000 blade is used and serviced correctly, it has a long life and the total operating costs remain low. Minor patch welding can extend the life of a worn mounting plate. <laughs>